Let's take a closer look at the Typhoon assemblies. I've already mentioned that they're modular, so that means I can break my, um, I, can, I can actually have multiple assemblies. And uh, inside of each module in my application, so I have the app module, I have an assembly for the application inside of Data Dragon and also inside of Core. So if we look at the actual assembly, this is just a list of definitions. This is um, a way to define all of the classes that are used in my application and what each class's dependencies are. And if a class doesn't have a dependency but is instead referenced as a dependency, I declare those in here as well. So if we look at the application assembly, we can see a couple of things. First of all, I reference two other assemblies, the core components assembly, which I declare as a property, and the data dragon components assembly, which I also declare as a property. So from the application assembly, I can reference any definitions that are declared in those other assemblies. And we'll look at those in just a second. Aside from that, I have a couple of components that make up my application. I have the app delegate, which is part of every iOS application. I have the champion collection view controller, which I talked about, the champion skin collection view controller, and then this other class, which I haven't yet talked about, is a query task. It's just a command, part of the command pattern that I employ, and its purpose is to allow any component to query data from a database. It's a general purpose class and I use it in both the collection view controller, the, the champion collection view controller and the champion skin collection view controller. These other definitions for device, screen, window, and query task are simply references or definitions that are used by the other application classes. So, I don't, these don't declare any dependencies, they're just used by these other components. Let's look at the implementation for the application assembly. Now, if we look, I have everything, I like to keep everything tidy and, and alphabetized, so all my declarations or definitions are in alphabetical order. Starting with the app delegate. So here, I'm just declaring a, a, a method called app delegate and it references the app delegate class, which I have over here, and it specifies a configuration. And this syntax you'll just have to kind of get used to, but once you get used to it, it's not bad. All of my dependencies for everything in my application is declared in an assembly. So here you can see that the app delegate needs the bundle identifier, which it gets from the core components assembly and a, it, it has a property called bundle identifier. It also injects the content resolver, the data dragon sync service, an array of loggers, the notification center, main screen and window. Now this differs from a typical iOS application where some of these things are just referenced internally. For example, you might say, um, you know, you might create a, a window and a screen and everything inside of your class. But in a Typhoon application, all of its dependencies are injected and, and they're all defined in the assembly. I'm gonna skip this config for now because I'll talk about it in just a second. But if we step down through, you'll see I have a declaration for the champion view controller and its injections or its dependencies. So it also needs the content resolver. It needs the main bundle, the current device, and also the uh, a task factory, and I'll touch on this in a second. Champion Skin View Controller has two, has two dependencies, the Content Resolver and the Task Factory. Now these other things here, the device, the main screen, the window, and the query task don't really have any dependencies that I'm injecting. However, wh what, what they do, the purpose is that they're used elsewhere. So the current device is a dependency of the of the uh, champion collection view controller here and I can reference that self current device so it will actually reference this dependency here. Typhoon will create an instance or or access the instance of this using whatever mechanism is necessary 
either creating a new instance or using the singleton syntax or whatever. And it will inject the, the current device instance into whatever calls for it. So again, um, the assembly's purpose is to describe each of the components in your application, whether they are components you wrote or whether they're part of the SDK, like some of these, and describes their, their uh, dependencies. One thing I wanted to touch on here is, is, is this thing called scope. By default, the scope for each declaration here is called um, singleton. That means that Typhoon will create one and only one instance of that class throughout the application. It, it, it inf there is no enforcement at the class level, but it just, whenever anything calls for that dependency, it will always return the same instance that it, all, that it already created. Since it's the default, I don't have to declare the scope within each declaration. However, for this query task, um, I've used a, a scope of prototype. What prototype means is that each time something calls for the query task, it will create a new instance of that query task. So up here, I need um, that, that query task actually indirectly through this task factory, and I'll talk about more about this later, but um, the champion view controller needs to query data for the list of champions, and each time it's asked for, you, you'll get a new query task, and the same for the skin collection view controller. Without going into great detail, detail, let's take a quick look at the other assemblies in the application. So let's head over to the core module and the core components declaration. This is where I declare all components that are not specific to the UI or the application. So generic things like the bundle identifier, a logger, content provider factory, content resolver. I need the file manager, which is an instance of NS file manager. I need the bundle, the main bundle. I also need the NS notification center, the URL cache, etc. Now I declare all of these as dependencies as opposed to referencing them inside of the classes that need them, which is what's typically the case. So for example, if you need the notification center, you would typically just create a uh, variable and reference NS notification center default center. Well, instead of doing that, I declare that as a dependency. So if we look at here quickly, the declarations and the definitions of all my dependencies, they're very simple. I'm going to go into detail in another video about how these definitions are constructed. And then finally, let's look quickly at the Data Dragon um, definition. Uh, there's quite a few classes in Data Dragon, and most of them are tasks, which are implementations of the command pattern. There's a couple other things like the database and some operation manager for retrieving data remotely from an API, a remote REST endpoint. And, but most of these things are just commands or tasks. And all the definitions are described in the assembly for Data Dragon.